Did you say anything? We are in Vegas and you are watching Yeah, just say it together. We are in Vegas and you are watching rugby. Pay attention, boys. All right, after three. One, two, three. We're in Vegas and you are watching Rugby Wrap-Up. Coming up next on Rugby Wrap-Up, Six Nations and Wailing in Wales over the Welsh Rugby Union. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by Irish Rugby Tours, the Rugby Tours people. A balanced palate, nutrition for peak performance. And the Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street, the world's best rugby pub. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy and Steve Lewis at the Fantasy Sports Network, Studio 34 in Midtown Manhattan. And Steve, we're talking Six Nations. Let's start the other side of the pond, the Guinness Six Nations. Uh, we, we did a preview last week, Alex and I, so let's just get to the, the matches in front of us. But before we do, you know, if anybody knows a little bit about governing bodies, it's you. With USA Rugby, you're the congressman. You're also the guy that exacted a great deal of change or helped exact a great deal of change. But compared to the Welsh Rugby Union, USA Rugby looks like a Fortune 100 company, right? I mean, they look like Google compared to what's going on over there. And this is, this is they've got a third-ranked team in the world, and they're playing for a Grand Slam. Yeah, so, so dysfunction is not, you know exclusive to American rugby or exactly. USA rugby yeah. as an organization. Um, Scotland had the problems for a while. Australia having the problems now, and it's, it's the turn of the Welsh. So it's all kicking off in Cardiff, just not on the field. Um, so what's happened is that um, the Welsh Rugby Union has had an um, initiative called Project Reset. So they're looking at the viability of their teams and how they compete. The, the irony is the national team is competing so well. And as you say, going for a Grand Slam, ranked number three, 12 months undefeated, 11 consecutive victories, all, all of the above. But they're still tinkering. There's um, internal politics. There's, there's a move to have a team in North Wales. They're trying to make two teams merge. They're trying to get Scarlets and Ospreys to, to merge, which would yeah. be the equivalent of Major League Baseball trying to have the Mets and Yankees merge. Right. So and, and for, for the sake of having a team in Alaska. Yeah, exactly right. So, so here's the point. So they're, they're trying to figure out how, how, do they, how does their domestic game work best, and they've just made a hash of this. Um, the, the regions haven't really satisfied the sort of uh, primeval need of Welsh rugby fans, right, in the, way that, in the way that clubs did. So club rugby in Wales was in the ascendancy. You know, it was Swansea Neath, Van Athlete Cardiff. I mean, th- these were the rivalries. In addition, they're playing in the Pro 14. So it's, as you know, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, and Italy – but Wales's natural rivalries are actually with English teams rather than Scottish teams or Irish teams. So it's those Welsh clubs when they used to play, go across the seven, they play Bath, they play Bristol, they play Gloucester. Those were the big games. And there's nothing that gets a Welshman more fired up than playing an English team, whether it's the national team or clubs. So, so historically and in terms of culturally, Welsh teams really ought to be in the Premiership, playing with and against the English. Um, for a variety of reasons, that's not happening. So really, what they're looking to do is they're tinkering with the domestic game, and I think they're making some mistakes. And, and I think this is interesting because I think there's a lot of governing bodies are making a lot of mistakes right now. Yeah. I mean, the World Rugby, World League thing's one thing. World Rugby leaving Vegas is another thing. Here we've got the Welsh Union. We had the American Union going bankrupt last year. So, so there's something in the water, which is amateur governing bodies running a professional game and not running it well. And this is to the point of dysfunction where the chairman of the board of the Ospreys resigned and called it a, a catastrophic mismanagement. Project inept. Yeah, project inept. Uh, just crazy. But it just goes to show how, you know, these, these governing bodies can be wacky. And this is to the point where players are seeking counseling because they don't know what's up. They don't know what, you know whether the, their, bread, their bread's going to be buttered or not, where it's going to be right, buttered. But- it's all fun and games, but actually for these guys, it's their livelihood, right? So, you know, it's, it's your job. You've got to, someone got wives and kids, and what am I doing next year? I can get two more years to play and cash in. Um, what's going on? So, and, and very disruptive in a couple of days prior to a Six Nation game. Very disruptive. Yeah. Uh, uh, and in 1999, Cardiff and Swansea played a Rebel uh, season, right? You think that could happen again? No. 
they, uh, they, they, um, yes, they did. They, they, they opted out and they played against English teams exclusively that year. Um, Trying to sell our crowds. I, I don't think uh, you were repeating on the cards there. Um, there's too many players um, with, with dual contracts. Um, national team's going well. It's a World Cup year. People don't want to rock the boat. I don't think it will get to that. All right, we're getting the sign that we're running out of time, so let's, let's tighten this one up. Uh, predictions. You've got England at Italy. Who are you going to pick for that one? Italy, you know, it's come on. We, this, isn't even, this, is, this isn't even a pick, right? Not a pick. All right, we're going to go with Italy then. No. We, obviously England, England. Right? Ireland, France. That's going to be an interesting one. So France is a little bit of confidence. A little confidence beating Scotland last week and have named an unchanged team, which is unlike the French. Um, so maybe they, maybe they, maybe they're back. Are they back? They're going playing against an Irish team who have, you know, I wouldn't say the wheels have come off their particular chariot, but they, um, you know, they're not. Maybe they, they need to reassert themselves. So that's going to be a fascinating game. Yeah. All right, and then there's another match, Steve. <laughs> you want to tell us about that third match? Yeah, it's the uh, forces of. Goodness and light, playing against the leek-eating, daffodil-wearing choristers from the valleys. And where are they playing this one? Fortress Murrayfield. And will the ghost of William Wallace will them past the daffodil eaters? I actually think so. Really? I actually think so. I think Will's. Who's think coming I, back to that squad? Any of the, uh, the yeah, top seven that Russell, were Russell, Nell, Watson. I think Russell is. Nell and Watson certainly. Tight head, open side, and Finn Russell, obviously, if I have. Don't believe so. All right. Don't so believe you... so. But anyway, I, I've got a sneaking feeling, you know, Scotland haven't fired a shot yet in the Six Nations. Hopefully this is the, the day they do it. All right. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna stick with Wales in this one. I think that they're continuing on their upward trend. And also, Johnny Lewis is Welsh, and he edits these episodes. So if we want to look good, one of us better pick Wales. Lewis is a good Welsh name. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's also, uh, it serves to be Scottish as well. All right, we are out of time, but thank you, my friend, for coming in. I know that you were hard-pressed after the red eye. Wouldn't miss it for the world. All right, and on that note, Mr. Steve Lewis and Matt McCarthy talking rugby at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 in New York City, signing off.